Welcome to the first in what I hope will be a series of video tutorials where I show some of the current techniques and workflows I use in my practice. Granted, I'm in solo practice and what works for me might not apply to a large group practice, but hopefully there will be a few tips or tricks that anyone can use. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the x-ray workflow that I use and how I add billing codes and also how I insert x-rays into the patient chart. This entire video was made with me logging in remotely from my home computer to the desktop computer at my office using the Chrome Remote Desktop, which is a free extension to the Google Chrome browser. It is available at the Google Web Store and is really a great way to remote in. I've used LogMeIn for several years and I actually like the way the Google uh, Chrome Desktop remote works better. Once I've connected, I can go ahead and start up my Litech MD. And I also like to adjust the display so that I can see this at uh, the regular resolution and original size. And it just it makes it as if I'm sitting in front of the computer desktop at my office. So let me go ahead and open up the chart on my test patient and show you how I use my quick text for x-rays. I'm going to load up a blank progress note and also one of my templates that has my x-ray quick text built in and there it is. This is a pop-up quick text that will give me a list of various x-ray views that I commonly take at my office. Of course this can be expanded for your office but these are the views that I generally take and these are already pre-coded with not only the PR6 dot code but also the proper foot modifiers which are essential in proper coding and also these numbers which I'll show you how to use those in a minute. It also has an order that I can generate and recursive quick text so that if I want to take more than just one type of view I can easily add additional views such as ankle views by clicking on this pop-up quick text and inserting it. And here I can once again specify which extremity and place an order. The x-ray report uses the K dot code to push the report into the x-ray tab on the chart. Now this could just as easily contain quick text if I wanted to expand, but I usually use drag and dictate to enter my uh, x-ray reports. Uh, here I'll just quickly type in something as a test just to show how this will be pushed into the x-ray tab and this is also where we're going to store the actual x-ray films. And we'll go ahead and save this and you'll see how it will go ahead and issue those orders that we placed. Now a little bit about the PR6 dot code. I use this to push the treatment and diagnosis codes right into the electronic encounter form. These numbers at the end of the PR6 dot code associates the diagnosis codes with the procedure codes and places them in the proper order. Now you can access the list of diagnosis codes using the Shift F3 key combination or through the toolbar icon. I have a little cheat sheet with some of the common ICD-9s I use right next to my computer, but there's several ways to get them in. And once you see that they're in, it's formatted in the special way to allow the use of the relative diagnosis codes. Now, in order to make sure this formats correctly, you do have to go into the uh, special features screen under the maintenance configuration menu and change this box to click the relative diagnosis numbering. You also have to change in the P part any section under auto number relative number and change that to on. So if you do that, you'll get this formatting properly, and this will pull right into your PR6 dot code to bring the proper diagnosis in with the procedure code and in the proper order. One of the things I really like about the McKesson product is that there are a number of ways to accomplish the same end. 
And here I show that I can use various types of quick text to help me show the order of diagnosis code pointers. Um, and I can also use a pop-up quick text using the top 50 diagnosis codes and format them properly so that it makes entry much easier and I don't even have to use the uh, Shift F3 to look up the diagnosis codes. Here I show that quick text pop-ups so that I can determine the order number associated with various diagnoses and there's my top 50 diagnosis pop-up. And if we expand that, you can see these are already properly formatted. And I can just pick on a diagnosis and tell it which number place I want it to be associated with. And this is also a recursive quick text. So there we have another pop-up. So we can just keep adding all the diagnoses as they go on and number them accordingly then we always have to make sure that we've associated the numbers under the procedure. There you can see the numbers are fully associated with the diagnosis and the procedure in the proper order. It is important to remember that when you use the relative diagnosis coding and relative numbering, it applies not only to diagnoses but also to major problems and other problems. And I'll show you an example of that here if I uh, insert this as a diagnosis. You'll see it inserts the properly formatted diagnosis with the relative pointer at the end. If I change this to a major problem and insert a major problem, it will insert a major problem and also add a relative pointer. Same thing with an other problem. And these will all be or can be transferred into the electronic encounter form if they are used in the pointers in the procedure codes. And I'll show an example of that here. There is the procedure code with the pointers at the end, 4321. And then if we look at the electronic encounter form, we will see it placed those diagnoses in exactly that same order. And it uses not only the diagnosis codes, but also the major problem and other problem codes that were placed within the chart note. Looking at the detail of the procedure code, we can see that the proper modifier for the extremity was placed in the proper position as well. And as we can see, the orders have been properly placed as well. Now it's time to actually add the x-rays into the chart. First, we'll go over to the x-ray tab and we'll open up the note which was pushed into here from the chart note. Now we're going to edit this and we're going to go ahead and insert an image from a file. Now I don't have a digital x-ray in my office, so I take plain radiographs and then I place them up on a view box in a darkened room, use my digital camera, and take a photograph of them. I then take the SD card and place it into my desktop computer and access the files there. While this works fine if there are just a few images, it can become somewhat tedious, so I'll be showing an alternative method that I use for placing several images into the chart at once. And once this is saved, we can go ahead and open up that note and we'll see that the x-ray report will be in there and also the films. I've actually printed these out using my laser printer to send off as a, with a report and it's fairly readable uh, for obvious conditions such as fractures. I also use an alternate method of inserting images using a program called APDF Merger. The program does cost about $30, but you can actually get a free copy of it if you write about it on a blog. And so here I have an instance of it opened up, and you can either add 
using the add key or I like to just highlight and then drag and drop all of my images into the window and then click the merge button and save it and it'll save it all as one PDF file. Now that I have all images saved as a single PDF file I can go ahead and open up my x-ray tab again and I'm just going to quickly delete these films that I had in here and I'm going to go ahead and use insert and this time I'm going to insert a linked file and I'm going to browse over to that PDF file and click on it to insert it into the x-ray tab and go ahead and title it and we can go ahead and take a look at it to see how it comes out and it opens up in your PDF viewer and there we have all of the images easily accessible from within the x-ray tab of the patient's chart. Well I hope you may have picked up a couple of tips or techniques that you can use in your own practice and if you have any questions or comments for me I'd love to hear from you.